It isn't enough to think outside the box. Thinking is passive. Get used to acting outside of the box. Tim Ferriss, business author. Today, we celebrate the end of the Lessons from Coca-Cola series with a look back over some of the most creative campaigns. How do you think outside of the box? On today's Straight Shot Marketing Podcast. Welcome to Straight Shot. Marketing is everywhere. It's around your life. From what you eat to what you wear and where you go. It is a vital part of any and all business. Let's discuss the world of marketing and business as it influences everyday life with the staff of Atlanta Marketing Agency, Reformation Productions, and guests as they give it to us straight. Get ready. Take aim. Steady. Welcome to Straight Shot. Welcome, everyone, to this final episode in the Lessons from Coca-Cola series. We've started at the beginning and followed Coke through their business history, pulling lessons that business owners and marketing professionals can use to this day. From the invention of couponing, to the importance of their brand in the United States military, to the rise and fall of New Coke during the Civil, during the civil War, <laughs> during the Cola Wars, and today... Today, we are going to take a quick walk through some of their most creative out-of-the-box campaigns. Coca-Cola has been very creative and very out-of-the-box in the last few years. So, a lot of what we're going to show you today is fairly recent. Which is where we are in the timeline. Right, it is. So, we are going to talk through some of the brilliant marketing that Coke has done in the past decade or so. I want to start with one of the earliest examples that we have to share today. So, okay. do you remember the Santa Claus episode? <laughs> Where you played Santa? The, I played Santa Oh, wait, that was the, the teaser. Promo. That was the teaser. Go on. So... There's a Santa Claus episode mm -hmm. and the the Santa holiday marketing campaigns that Coke started back in the late 1920s, early 1930s. We discussed all yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. We discussed it in the Solidifying Your Brand episode of the series where we talked about the myth that Coca-Cola invented Santa Claus. Right. And we also discussed why they decided to embark on seasonal advertising during the holidays to begin with. Yes. So... Several of the examples today you'll notice are set in a holiday backdrop, but mm. with the success of their Christmas-related advertising, it led to this one, Ooh. which is not Christmas. No. It is a Thanksgiving ad. A Thanksgiving ad. Yes. Jen, would you like to set it up? I would love to set this up, Zachary. Thank you. <laughs> Here's what they did. They placed a Coke employee undercover at a fast food restaurant, and every time someone said the words, Thank you. They gave them a free Coke. So here's how it played out. Hello, how are you? Today? How many times did your mama tell you thank you was the magic word? I thought it was open sesame. <laughs> Here are your Cokes. Right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Here's a Coke on the house. Oh, thank you. You're welcome again. Here's one more for you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, here's two. One for the passenger seat. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you! Thank you! Two for the back seat. Thank you! Thank you! Here we go! Oh, thank you! All right, thank you guys! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Thank See, thank that you, one thank doesn't you. need any more sugar. <laughs> We're all stocked up. Charlie, bring it around. Oh, oh Charlie! Yeah. Oh, wow. Charlie! Oh, yeah. That's a lot of cola. I love Charlie! All right, what do you guys say? Thank you! <laughs> Where will happiness strike next? Da, da, da. Brilliant. It says, thank you from Coca-Cola. It's silly and it helps teach society to be a little more polite. Yes. So it's good for children and, and, and adults alike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sugar <laughs> water. It shares happiness <laughs> now coke went on a roll with this share happiness campaign yes they did and in this next ad they placed a special coke machine in a college cafeteria so they could share happiness with the student body let's watch a few clips that's todd Looks 
also a thing that It looks like a regular tie. favorites, Coke and pizza. <laughs> All right, so this campaign brought smiles to many faces, many and faces. Coke became the talk of the campus. But not only that, mm-hmm. this experience would be embedded into the stories of those students' lives, and it would be something they would never forget. It'd be something that they will retell from the time it happened until the mm-hmm. time that they have grandbabies. Can you imagine that phone call home that day to their parents or whatever? So how was school, honey? Oh, I got a 24-foot sub out of the Coke machine. And she's probably thinking, you study too hard. <laughs> Are you on the drugs? Are you on the pot? <laughs> he's on the pot. Harold, he's on the pot. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So these are all really feel-goods, which they is are. great. So let's watch another one. This one takes place in Brazil, where it is muy hot. Okay, this is me doing Brazil. <laughs> uh, they made a rolling free Coke machine. And it didn't and didn't say anything about it. They do that a lot. So yeah. it's just it's one thing you'll notice in these videos is Coke like steps into the marketplace, drops something, and then sits back and says, "Let's see what's going to happen." Let's watch what happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a box truck with a big push button. Yep. And once the first person pushed the button and received a free Coke, it became a magnet for others. Yes. Once the crowd was drawn. Cool water was sprayed out of the top to cool down the crowd. Many smiles again. Many, that many day. smiles. Uh, many, many smiles. Where would the smile strike next? <laughs> all right, so there's one very important element to all of these, okay? Mm-hmm. With all of these, Coke has the cameras rolling. Yes. That way, the experiences could be shared with the entire world via social media and. TV ads and their website and anywhere else they could think of. So, as a viewer, when you get to watch these, you can feel those same emotions just as just as well. Okay, this brings up the next one: mascara alert. <laughs> Grab your Kleenex. This is a Christmas time video. Let's take a look. One of the things I like about this uh, commercial is that it does pay homage to the people that are keeping the stores open late so that when the rest of us are doing our last minute shopping or trying to grab that last dinner before we head home, we pay homage to those people that keep the light on for us. One of the other things, I noticed you called it a commercial. This changes what a traditional commercial That's true. is. Usually commercial meant every, you know, 30, 60 second ad on the, the television. This is a lot longer than that, and it was never intended to be used on broadcast airplay. But it's still a commercial video. 
Well, Times like Michael Jackson made are music changing. videos that were 12 hours long. <laughs> yes, no, it's very good. Ang hirap maging waiter, lalo na yung Pasko ko. Naiship pa ako. Yung tipong Pasko-Pasko ko, nagtatrabaho ko, hindi mo ka-feeling yung pamilya mo. Yung may guess akong ano, talagang bumabalik-balik. Naisip ko na lang na ang saya nila. Eh, wala na eh. Ang hirap. Yung tipong sana ganyan din na rara na sa tunay. Let's hear for the retail holidays man jeez how many times have you guys ever been in like a walmart or just some other department store on christmas eve on you know black friday on freaking back to school and they just trash the place yeah. and you know these employees have to stay late not only to keep the lights on for us but then to clean up after us so this is just such a sweet, sweet sentiment Order gonna set me up. Thank you for your support, Thank Merry Christmas. Lahat ng bibili kong grocery kuya para sa yan. What really kills me is the kid in the restaurant. Watch for it. Ugh, it kills me. Well, the thing is, you know, you have to think, these people, she's packing, what she said earlier, she's packing all of these gift wrapping all these gifts but and she can't afford gifts on her own mm -hmm. so this nor does she have the time it, to go shop for herself this made it where that could happen for her oh here's the kid at the restaurant they brought his family in to eat with him i was wondering if she was going to give all that food to that skinny little kid and i was like <laughs> he's not going to eat all that but she brought his family in. how wonderful look at him he is just a sobbing mess love it <laughs> oh he loves his mama <laughs> Oh, Coke, stop it. <laughs> Making babies out of every one of us. So this video recognizes those that work hard throughout the Christmas season so that others can enjoy time and gift giving with their families. It really, I think it was a really beautiful way to, to kind of pay tribute to those people. It's so sweet and loving. So again, the cameras were rolling, mm. but not all of the examples are like this one. Here's an example of an out of the box campaign for a new grip bottle oh, that they cheers. had. Not, not here. <laughs> um, and they had kind of Velcro signage that sticks oh, to your no. clothes as you're in the bus stop. So you know, if you're in the bus stop, you always end up leaning on the side of the bus stop. Oh my gosh! Well, it was I would Velcro. take my kid and I would pick him up and I'd stick him to the stick wall. Stick him to the wall. And see, <laughs> see if he can stay in his coat. I'd be like, hold really still. Mommy wants to try something. Um, and then, uh, then this <laughs> I'm one. I'm an awesome parent that way. And then this one was from the drinkable placeholder campaign that they did for Thanksgiving. They had bottles. Uh, this was 2015. They had bottles that said, you know, Papa, Mama, Grandma. Granny. Yeah, all of that. And That's you, cool. The idea was you put them wherever you were going to set them around your, your Thanksgiving. You also know who An steals the bottles. Because, another, you know, <laughs> yeah. Another, another Thanksgiving ad here. So this brings up the Share a Coke campaign. Are you going yes. to talk about that? It was, it was actually very similar. Um, because it was written on the the bottle. So, um, yes, many have seen the Share a Coke campaign, obviously with your the name written across the bottle, but a lot of people don't know where it came from. Why did we not have Zachary and Jennifer bottles? Um, well, we will talk about that. When, let's go through the history of how this campaign happened. The Share a Coke campaign got its start in Australia. Good eye, Mike. Good eye. So, that's not a knife. Um, wow. So, the brand had a Crikey. problem. 
the brand had a problem there. Consumer research data showed that 50% of all Australians under the age of 30 had never tasted mm, Coke. So sad. So the Coca-Cola bottlers took 150 of the most popular names in the country and placed them on Coke bottles, then put them on shelves and again said nothing. Hmm. Just waited to see what would happen. Now, the internet lit up immediately. Okay? You know, social media everywhere, people talking about it. And Coke then contacted many of those that shared about their experience on social media to be part of the full launch new Hmm. campaign for um, for Share Coke. Kate and Kate, the two Kates. Classy Kate. Crazy Kate. If you know a Kate, share a Coke with Kate. Or Mel, or Dave, or Jay. Then they took to the media waves and invited all Australians to share a Coke with their friends, showing them examples from the soft launch. So all of those people that uh, they contacted and recruited from social media, they got to be in the actual ads. Oh, that's cool. Pay for them. The campaign took off on multiple media at the same time. It was everywhere. And the success caught the news media's attention. And they started reporting on what was happening. Australians started contacting the company wanting their name on a Coke if they couldn't find it. And Coke made an event out of it. Of course they did. They set up big kiosks where you could get any name custom printed on a Coke can. Super cool. It was so popular that they began to take submissions and votes on the internet as to which new names they should add in bulk to the campaign. So, again, the people joined in. 65,000 people submitted names or voted, and 50 new names were released into the Australian marketplace. That's a lot of Nigels. So Australia had learned of Coke, and they loved it. There was a 71% increase in consumption among their target demographic. 5% more people overall were drinking Coca-Cola. There was an 870% increase in Facebook traffic. So you know what they did? They decided, hey, let's roll this campaign out in other countries. I believe they officially said it works. Which is why you have now learned of it in America. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Now, let's talk about how they use technology to be creative innovators in the marketplace. Now, we know they've been creative innovators for a while, Mm -hmm. so let's talk about how they've used technology for that in the next couple of years. Do you know what I'm doing? What are you doing, Jennifer? I'm dancing. Dancing, dancing. Dancing. You left me hanging on that. Dun, dun, dun. They made a dancing. dancing machine. (laughs) They made a dancing (laughs) Coke machine. Kind of like a dance challenge video game that rewarded participants with Coke and placed it in a movie theater. The machine took photos of the participants and provided a way for them to share them on social media, gaining ever more traffic for the brand. This was during the time that we came out. And, oh, the, and the Wii, like the, yeah, the Wii game? game console, yeah. When they had the where you could like dance in front of your TV and yeah. it would see you, dance, and dance, also revolution. dance, dance, revolution, yeah. So that the, again, very hip on. What did was you did going you have a time. dance, dance, revolution? I had a Wii, and the children played it. Uh-huh, I, the children, I right, did not. right? I I might have done it once or twice. That was uh, Prince <laughs> Prince on repeat. He was dancing to. Uh, now, one of my favorites was when they shared snow. With a part of the world that never sees snow. This is so. I, this is almost unbelievable. It well is a, probably some tricks of technology involved. What? But no. Let's take a look. Okay. They placed a machine in Finland with a shovel next to it, Finland. and when you filled the machine with snow, a linked machine in China blew falling snow out of the top of it. Say what now? Yes, they would. It put snow in one side, and it would blow snow out in China. 
So it would be as if snow was traveling from Finland. Me thinks that might be <laughs> some sort of technology China. magic. So the machines were linked together via video so that they could wave to each other and react to each other across the globe. The machines wave to each other? The people wave no, to each other? No, the, the people, people in the machines. I don't know what the machines are capable well, of. No, the people looking at the video monitor gotcha. could, could see each other. So the smiles on the faces of the people in Singapore that were having snow falling on them mm -hmm. made the Finlanders want to give them even more snow because they were happy, so they wanted to keep them. Even. <laughs> so again, more snow. kindness and happiness Rules the world of Coca-Cola. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> they also accomplished the opposite of that. They made Coke bottles out of ice, and they distributed them on the beach during the summer to create special moments for the beachgoers. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the youth that Pepsi had been championing, so why go after them so much? Because they become the customers of tomorrow when they get older. See, customer, small customers grow into big customers. That's right. Remember, we discussed this in our Cola Wars episode. We did. So they also created the first drinkable advertising. Wait, what? They started by making a billboard that literally dispensed Coke Zero. You have Coke Zero? I do. Where is this billboard? <laughs> so they started with the billboard that literally spit out. Um, it spit it out? Literally dispensed Coke Zero. <laughs> then they came up with a really sophisticated way of giving people coupons directly and personally through the Shazam music and video recognition technology and multimedia advertising. So what they did is you would see this ad. Mm -hmm. You'll, you see this ad, and it says, this is a drinkable ad. And then you put your phone up, you turn on the Shazam app, and you point. You know what Shazam is? Yeah, it recognizes music that's yeah. playing, right? So it, it will also has video as well. And so you mm -hmm. point it at it, and then what it does is this interacts with the music that's playing and the video that's on the screen to give you original content. And then that content turns into a coupon. That the coupon you could then take in and get a free Coke. What? So uh, they also made 3D print ads that became cups and flyers that became straws and tweets that turned into coupons. All of the ads gave Coke Zero to potential customers. And they called it drinkable ads. What about the Hug Me Coke machine? If you gave the machine a hug, it gave you a Coke. Share the love. They also jumped in on the emoticons craze with their product labels. All right, so then there is also the share campaign where they set up to test their customers with a holiday surprise. And then, of course, capture it out on of film. Of course, of course. The Coke machine always gave... Two Cokes. So you put your money in, and instead of one, it gave you two. The question is, would they decide to share the extra one or keep it for themselves? Greedy Coke. And then the last one that we'll go over today before the straight shot was a trick event that Coke created. Aren't they all trick events? This one was centered around Valentine's Day. So the idea was to connect people that might be lonely at bus stops. Aww. So it was a motion activated video chat between two different bus stops. So people would make connections in anonymity across video chat. Okay. Then the trick. The bus stops were only one stop away from each other. So as they got on the bus, they would meet with the person they were just chatting with. And a Coke representative was there to give them a Coke to share. And to let them know they were on Candid Camera. Candid Camera. So much love. <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's take a break to show some love to our sponsors. And when we come back, Zachary will bring us this, today's straight shot from today's episode. Right. Straight Shot is brought to you by Reformation Productions, a full-service marketing agency in Atlanta, Georgia helping companies promote and communicate their business in the most efficient and effective ways possible through straight line marketing. Find out more by visiting reformationpro.com or call 678-825-8086. 
Reformation Productions. Think in straight lines. Welcome back, everyone. Before we get to the straight shot, I want to take a moment to remind you, if you haven't already, to subscribe to our show. Whether on YouTube, Spotify, Pandora, Apple Podcasts, wherever you enjoy the show, it helps us out if you click that subscribe button and like our videos. So please, do a homegirl a favor, hit subscribe. Okay, Zachary, lessons from today's final episode in the Lessons from Coca-Cola series. All right, number one. Number one. Be creative. Creativity leads to interest in sharing, keeping people's attention on your brand. Mm -hmm. All of today's examples from Coca-Cola are great examples of how to be creative and think outside of the box when it comes to communicating your brand. Creativity evokes emotion, not just information. Mm -hmm. Information alone can be boring. Make the most out of your marketing investment by being creative with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Number two. Number two. Always make the most of every opportunity. Now, by this, I mean keep those video cameras rolling. Yep. Take photos. One event can be a campaign shared and expanded over months in marketing. And a lot of what we saw Coke do here, they were one-time events that were videoed and audio recorded, and then that was used to fuel a full campaign on social media, TV, radio, print, whatever, right? So, very important, again, efficiency, productivity is a big thing here. Mm -hmm. Make the most out of of what you're doing. Carpe the DM, yes. Number three. Number three. All of these ads that I showed you all feed the brand. Mm -hmm. As I've mentioned throughout this whole series, Coke is about enjoying life and sharing happiness. That's the brand foundation that they've laid in its most simplest terms. So all of the marketing efforts that we've shown fit right in that footprint. So be true to your brand always. Mm -hmm. That's how it grows. Grows big enough to take care of you in the long run. When you make a mistake like New Coke. Whoops. Or have sugar shortages because of the next world war. Temperance. <laughs> so, Little things. <laughs> number four. Quattro. There are traditions in various cultures that make it easy for you to connect with others. Seasonal advertising isn't just for Christmas. No. Nope. There are several seasons throughout the year that you can use to connect with your audience. Mm-hmm. Holidays like Valentine's Day and Thanksgiving, but also Boss's Day. So yeah, Boss's Day, Secretary's Day. Uh, but Wait, there's why'd also, you look at me? I'm not your secretary. <laughs> there's also Ew. summer, winter. These are seasons. Football season, mm-hmm. right? Uh, there, there's a lot, and also there's you know things that are popular like the emoticon craze that was here for a season for a time. Planking, um, <laughs> planking, yes, <laughs> and the dance dance revolution fad was here for a while. Um, so keep your eyes open and keep your ear to the ground. There are opportunities everywhere that you can use to make a connection, stir emotions, build your brand through creating experiences for your audience. So now comes the conclusion of the Lessons of Coca-Cola series on Straight Shot Marketing Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have. I have gotten my Coke on this whole time, and I have very much enjoyed it. Let us know your favorite lessons in the comments, things that have meant something to you and your business. And if there is a company you would like for us to explore like we did with Coke here, let us know. If there are valuable lessons to be had, they could end up on a future episode of Straight Shot Marketing Podcast. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening. If you found this podcast informative, we hope you'll pass along our web address, straightshot.net, to your friends, colleagues, and business associates. And please leave us a positive review on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash straightshot. If you would like to have your question featured on the show, or would like to be a guest, call 678-825-8086, extension 300. Or you can email us at info at straightshot.net. Be sure to download the Straight Shot Podcast app on your smartphone to hear previous and new shows.
This has been Straight Shot.